You're listening to K98 FM's K98 Talk. Listening to the Morning Mashup, a production of Common Ground Media Group, Oklahoma, only on K98Talk.com. Yeah, fear. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. It's pretty a uh, famous little uh, line there from FDR. Sometimes I think we need to fear stupidity. Um, we also should fear those who really want power. Um. But yeah, you know, maybe fear is just overrated. Uh, I don't know, Sinestro does some really uh, fine work with fear. That's all. Well, their story. Hey, welcome, folks. It's the morning mashup Wednesday edition. Sorry I was absent yesterday. Not that anyone noticed, mind you. Uh, I was not feeling uh, too great. But uh, we appreciate you joining us here on K98talk.com. Hope everyone is having a fabulous morning. So yeah, we've uh, lots of stuff going on in the news. The um, there's a budget deal apparently. I'm sure it's going to screw somebody over. Um, but here's a story. I uh, found this on the Blaze, Washington Post. Oh my God, I hate some websites. I swear to Holy God, load up so weird. And there's, okay, that is bizarre. There's an ad on the site that is this guy, it's a, he's holding this thing, it looks kind of like a pipe into some, uh, like a river, and he's drinking out of it. I guess it's some kind of filter. <clears throat> anyway, um, all right, this one found on the Blaze. Washington Post releases 10 biggest Pinocchios of the year. Guess how many belong to Obama? President Barack Obama netted three of the 10 biggest Pinocchios of 2013, as judged by the Washington Post's fact checker, including the assertion that if you like your health care, you can keep it. The other misleading statements from the president were over the Benghazi terrorist attack and the sequester. The Post listed the health care uh, assertion first among the other statements deemed false, giving it four Pinocchios, the highest ranking under the system. Hmm, a president who lies. Never thought I'd see that. Uh, quote, This memorable promise by President Obama backfired on him when the Affordable Care Act went into effect and millions, and the rock means millions, of Americans started receiving cancellation notices. The Post said, of the keeping your insurance pledge. As we explained, uh, part of the reason for so many cancellations is because of the uh, unusually early March 23rd, 2010 uh, cutoff date for grandfather plans and because of the tight regulations written by the administration. The oft repeated, if you like your health care plan, you can keep your health care plan, also received PolitiFact's lie of the year. In another Obama falsehood, the president said when the sequester cuts kicked in that, uh, that quote, the Capitol Hill janitors just got a pay cut, end quote. Uh, quote, President Obama offered an evocative image at a news conference when the sequester struck janitors sweeping the empty halls of the Capitol building of the Capitol laboring for less pay, the Post wrote. But it turned out that he was completely wrong. No, which is janitorial staff did not face a pay cut and Capitol Hill administrative officials uh, even issued a statement saying the president's remarks were not true. Then the White House tried to argue that janitors at least uh, face a loss of overtime. That was uh, that was not correct either. The 
The episode was emblematic of the administration sequester rhetoric. And finally, finally, sorry, I'm, I love quoting The Rock. Um, in another scandal that plagued the administration for most of 2013, the Post slapped down the president's assertion that, quote, the day after Benghazi happened, I acknowledged that this was an act of terrorism, end quote. Uh, quote, President Obama did refer to an act of terror in the immediate aftermath of the Benghazi attack, but in vague terms, wrapped in a patriotic fervor, the Post wrote. He never uh, affirmatively stated that the American ambassador died because of an act of terror. Then, over a period of two weeks, uh, given three opportunities in interviews to affirmatively agree that the Benghazi attack was a terrorist attack, the president obfuscated or ducked the question. So this is a case of taking revisionist history too far for personal reasons. And again, who doesn't? I think we talked last time about revisionist history, and what of these jabronis doesn't do that? I mean, really. What talk show host doesn't do it? What? Anyway. Um, the Post also nailed Republicans calling out Rep. Daryl Issa, Republican of California, whose committee is investigating the administration's handling of security at the U.S. compound in Benghazi. Issa charged that then-Secretary of State Clinton denied uh, security for Libyan personnel with her signature on a cable. Quote, the issue became a political flashpoint after four Americans, including the U.S. ambassador, were killed at two U.S. compounds in Benghazi, the Post said. But the claim that Clinton signed the cable was absurd, as every cable, even the most mundane, bears the Secretary's uh, air quote signature because it is automatically added by the communication center. There is no evidence Clinton was even aware of the request. Lots and lots of liars in Hollywood, in uh, Washington. So yeah, uh, that was a good one there. Um, as usual, here at the Morning Mashup, we talk about just whatever. And uh, I admittedly am not that awful prepared today. Uh, so let's see here. Let's go over to one of my uh, favorite uh places where you can see the apocalypse uh, you know right out in front of us uh, otherwise known as Drudge Report um, let's see there's a thing about veterans pay cuts that's always great CNN hosts orders producers to cut Larry Clayman from screen during interview EPA rules kill clean energy project Facebook can see what users type. Well, if you're typing in Facebook, of course they can see what you're typing. You know, this website kills me. It, if you didn't think the world was coming to an end, or there was something horrible, you just need to uh, seriously look at this webpage, and then you will see that it is all hope is freaking lost. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Oh, here's another one uh, from rantlifestyle.com. 25 celebs that shocked us when they came out as gay. Why is this even a story? Okay, Matt Bomer. Jason Collins. Oh, he's an NBA star. Uh, Raven Simone. Oh, I kind of had that one pegged. Uh, Ricky Martin. I guess in retrospect, at the time, he's a damn good looking guy, I tell you what. Lady Sovereign? What? A, a UK rapper. Dude, she looks like the missing Spice Girl. That is uh, disturbing. Portia de Rosie. Uh, that's Ellen's wife. Go, Ellen. Let's see here. What else? 
Amber Heard. Zachary Quinto. Hey, that's a dude who plays Spock on the uh, new Star Trek films. He does a fabulous job of that. Victor Garber. Oh, I didn't know. Huh. See, I have pretty good Gator, and I did not pick that. Victor Garber is awesome. If you've never watched the show Alias, I highly suggest watching it. It is five seasons of conspiracy uh, CIA goodness. Uh, it is just... It is so good. I've, I've watched the series start to finish at least three or four times. Every time I start it, I can't stop watching it. So I will just literally sit down and watch it over and over and over and over and over. Because it is that freaking good. Uh, Jonathan Bennett. Oh, yeah, he was uh, from Mean Girls. Okay. Let's see. Ian McKellen. Gandalf, uh, Matt Dallas, ooh, that hair, um, I guess he's on the ABC Family Series, Kyle XY, I don't have cable, I don't even know what that is, Sarah Paulson, uh, she was in the TV series American Horror Show, Jodie Foster, uh, Jillian Anderson, oh, I didn't know Jillian Anderson, was. I mean, the Kind of makes sense, but I can kind of see it. Huh. She's awesome, though. David Hyde Pierce. Oh. Crane from, uh, Niles Crane from Frasier. Huh. Kelly McGillis. Well, I think after having to kiss Tom Cruise a whole bunch in a movie, you'd probably turn you gay, too. So, uh, Nathan Lane. Yeah, we, uh, had that one pegged. Cynthia Nixon. Who's Cynthia Nixon? Uh, oh, she was on Sex in the City. Never, I'm proud to say I've never watched that show. Wanda Scott Sykes. Comedian and actress. I've seen her in something. I just don't know what. Uh, Cary Grant. Jonathan Knight. Uh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, oh. The right stuff. Eleanor Roosevelt. Interesting. Who knows? Maybe FDR's junk got stopped working. Never know. Uh, Susie Orman? Or Suze? And Annie Leibovitz. An American photographer. Yeah, that's uh, horribly boring. No one cares. <laughs> this is such a terrible show. Um, so bad. But, you know, I'm, I have to admit, man, when I was a kid, I loved this time of year. I mean, who didn't? It, it, it's Christmas, presents, time off of school. I dread this time of year now. I mean, Christmas morning is always a lot of fun. Watching the kids open their presents and have a great time. Getting to that point is a ginormous pain in the butt. Uh, it, it just is, because it costs so much money. It is so expensive. And then, of course, with my family... Uh, the, the double whammy of it is my kids' birthdays are both in, in the first, you know, few days of January. So we get that double shot there of, of Christmas and then seven to 10 days later, two birthdays. And, uh, yeah, that not fun. Now, here's an interesting article I found. This one uh, I found through the Washington Post. How much teachers get paid state by state. Okay, so... In the great state of Oklahoma, 
average teacher salary is $44,128. Um, wow, New York has, they're paid $75,279, which in New York, to be fair, it isn't a huge chunk of change. But I'll tell you what, teachers really do deserve more money. They work very hard, um, and granted the, oh my god, Oklahoma, we have the third lowest paid teachers in the nation. Damn, that is something to be proud of, folks. Third lowest paid teachers in the nation. Man. And, I mean, amazingly, we actually, at least in some school districts, have some very, very good schools. Um, the Broken Arrow schools up in Tulsa are really good. The schools here in Moore are really good. The schools in Norman are good. The schools in Edmond are good. It's just... We have really, I think as a society, some really screwed up priorities when we pay teachers so little, especially compared to what you know athletes and... <clears throat> excuse me, uh, actors and actresses make. It's just, and I don't know what the answer is. I really don't. I understand that states' budgets are are, are constrained. In fact, the only people making money are the, are the top 1% to 2% right now. Everyone else is poor and is, is losing money. So, yep. Gotta love American society. Um... Let's see here. What else we got going on? So I'm completely not prepared for uh, for today's show. We might end up doing a short run of it today. Yeah, I already talked about the guy who sold his nuts. Um, Oh, here's an interesting story. Man, why do I keep finding Washington Post articles? You are where you shop. What your grocery store says about you. Uh, where did you go shopping this weekend? If you vote Democrat, odds are uh, you stocked up at Trader Joe's or Whole Foods, neither of which we have here. If you call yourself a Republican, you are more likely to stock up at Walmart or Costco. Independent voters are more likely to get their groceries at traditional grocery stores like Food Lion, Publix, or Albertsons. I tell you what, man, folks in Florida, you really need to appreciate the glory that is Publix. Publix is an amazing grocery store. And I know, I know people like Dave Brown, it's just a grocery store. Who cares? Oh, no, no, no. No. It is the grocery store of grocery stores. Also, they have in their deli, they make the most kick-ass sandwiches that you can possibly imagine. They are so good. Oh my god, they're good. Um, but yeah, that's... um. Okay, you know what? I'm getting into that later. I think I'm going to talk a little bit about music for a while. Uh... Okay, so this is here's an article, and actually here in a moment I'm going to start talking about my top 30 albums of 2013, because that'll actually give me something to talk about. Um, but I found this one over, this is from the uh, Independent, which is a UK paper, um, Billy Bragg and Frank, Frank Turner, uh, it, to completely ask Martis, Frank Turner is one of my absolute favorites. Two Ages of Protest, or How Musicians Can Bridge the Social Divide. Okay, Adam Sherwin meets the singer-songwriters from different generations and backgrounds who have come together for a lunchtime busk 
to a campaign against homelessness. And this is pretty interesting because uh, um, uh, Billy Bragg is pretty much a socialist and, um, or at least a pretty hardline leftist, and Frank Turner is a libertarian. So, um, sorry, I got distracted there. Um, my God, no one's ever going to want to listen to this. <laughs> Okay, so, quote, uh, Singer-songwriters can't change the world, and that's a shame, laments Billy Bragg, the veteran purveyor of protest songs. But that doesn't mean we have to live in James Blunt's world either. This dig at the expense of the pop of one of Pop's blander exponents bends Bragg's friend and strumming soulmate Frank Turner into a paroxysms of laughter. Damn, British using big words. Good. God. Okay, hold on. I gotta Google that. What in the heck is that word? Let's find out. Show you how stupid I am. Paroxysm. A sudden attack or violent expression of a particular emotion or activity. Huh. I learned a new word today. Still can't pronounce it. Paroxysm. Um. Anyway, uh, Bragg and Turner make an unlikely duo. The former is the 55-year-old uh, patron saint of leftist causes whose political, uh, whose political blooding occurred during the minor strike of the 1980s. The latter is Eaton educated 24 years Bragg's junior and a rather different kind of anti-authoritarian. Uh, Turner has inherited Bragg's folk punk ma mantle, adapting the tradition in a way that appeals to teenagers more interested in stage diving than waving placards. Now the two musicians have come together for a street busk and concert uh, this week, both events in aid of Shelter, the homelessness charity. The pair in an uh, office at Sony ATV, Bragg's publisher, uh, where they run through likely songs for lunch and brusque uh, to take place near King's Cross on Tuesday. Uh, quote, uh, do you know the drugs don't work? Bragg asked Turner. Uh, quote, that's, uh, that's really easy to play. Uh, Turner proposes Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones. Everyone can sing the chorus, but they don't remember the verses. Uh, Bragg teases Turner over his appearance in Celebrity Mastermind uh, to be shown in the new year. Uh, special uh, special subject, Iron Maiden. Uh, Turner chides Bragg for getting the verses to t the Times Air changing uh, wrong when they sang the Dylan song at Turner's sold-out Wembley Arena show in 2012. There's a bond between the pair which belies their contrasting backgrounds and philosophies. In 2012, Bragg, the bard of the barking, uh, was protective towards his friend, when an attempt by the uh, Winchester Rays singer to explain his political leanings, a sympathy for anti-authoritarian libertarianism, was misinterpreted as Thatcher Thatcherism. Quote, if you're making the kind of music Frank and I make, and you play the kind of gigs we do, there's a bond uh, there's a bond to there's bound to be an overlap of issues said Bragg you come together on issues like the homeless and playing together makes it a special event for shelter the musician musicians say uh, they were shocked to learn that 80,000 children will wake up on Christmas morning homeless in a temporary accommodation according to government figures the number of families in emergency bed and breakfast housing stands at a 10-year high, and a shelter investigation found the condition in many B&Bs were unsafe, with children exposed to drug use and threats of violence. Quote, it's pretty gross that in a society as wealthy as ours, there are people who don't have a basic roof over their heads, said Turner. I don't pretend to be an expert on homelessness, and I hate it when people sound off about things they don't really know about. 
but I'm massively in favor of supporting organizations like Shelter, which can have a short-term impact on making the situation better. Bragg, who identifies, uh, quote, Thatcher selling off council houses as the root of the crisis, condemns the government's plan to deport uh, rough sleepers from EU countries and bar them from re-entry to the UK for 12 months. Uh, measures proposed to deter Bulgarian and Romanian migrants from claiming benefits in Britain when no movement restrictions are, are lifted in January. Quote, we spent a lot of time trying to free those people from, the so from Soviet tyranny, only to tell them to fuck off now, Bragg says. The whole point of the Cold War was to get rid of the Berlin Wall, to make them free, but all of a sudden, it's a, you're not that free, mate. <laughs> Why wouldn't they want to experience that freedom? Uh, you've you feel people uh, you feel people want to put the Berlin Wall back up again. Uh, these are people who have a uh, statutory right to uh, to stay in the country in the country as EU citizens. End quote. Um, let's see. It kind of goes on. I'm not going to read this whole thing. One thing that's really interesting is is how. One, Frank Turner was really, uh, his political views were so completely um, misinterpreted uh, by the media, and especially the British media wanted to just label him as some kind of right-wing nutcase, which couldn't be farther from the truth. Uh, Frank Turner is an Enlightenment-style uh, libertarian, and uh, I know because I have, I don't know the guy well, but... I did interview him for my website, OklahomaLefty.com, a few years ago. And I also uh, had the honor of meeting him when he played here in Oklahoma City. And, uh, yeah, it is... In fact, I will let me read the story Okay, that I wrote. This is something I, I put together back in 2012. A right-wing rocker or sloppy reporting... In a piece for the site libertarianrepublican.net entitled Right Wing Rock Alert England's Frank Turner Emerges, Eric uh, Dondero makes the same mistake that Michael Hand made in his piece Frank Turner Turns Out. Frank Turner turns out he was right wing all along. We just never noticed. Uh, from the post. Browsing on a music message board earlier today, I came across a, fan, a thread devoted to Frank Turner, which linked to an interview he gave last year. Uh, Turner, Tur uh, Tur Turner, Turner, God dang it, I can't read today. Turns out his libertarianism and belief in the power of the people to resist oppression aren't uh, aren't of the leftist sort. They're of the rightist sort. Now, I probably should have picked up on the clues when I reviewed England Keep My Bones, but I didn't. Uh, and so I poked further and found assorted interviews of the, um, of the kind of jaw-dropping right-wingness uh, that used to get pop, uh, pop singers castrated in the music press, but seems to have passed under the radar entirely, despite Turner's uh, status as an arena headlining act. Han went on to quote experts of various interviews from 2009 to 2011, including one in which Turner referred to himself as a libertarian uh, and uh, not right-wing. Here's the quote. Uh, er, er, referred to himself as a libertarian and right-wing. Here's the quote. Uh, to start with, most people don't seem to understand what the difference between left and right is. For example, the BNP are the hard left. I consider myself a libertarian. I consider myself to be a pretty right to be pretty right wing, and I get shit for saying that out loud. I was thinking about uh, about it the other day. I was thinking about how quite often I do keep my keep myself to myself on the subject because I can't be fucking bothered to have some guy look all shocked at me because he thinks social because I think socialism's retarded. Obviously, I can't speak for Turner, but based on this quote. The term right-wing appears to be used in contrast against left-wing. There is a big difference, though, between being a right-winger and a libertarian, and that is what uh, has been completely lost on hand in Don Duro. 
Dondero gave uh, goes on to quote a piece written by Billy Bragg entitled Frank Turner's A Political Stance is Part of a Post Ideological Culture from the Post. Uh, quote I thought that if you had an acoustic guitar, then it, uh, then it meant you were a protest singer, sang the Smiths in 1985. Well, lots of people seem to have thought that about Frank Turner until they read Michael Hahn's um, blog spot highlighting anti-leftist comments that Turner made in a 2009 interview. The singer-songwriter responded with a blog post of his own, uh, seeking to set the record straight. Most of my friends disagree with me, uh, not least Billy Bragg and Chris Titi. But being adults, we understand that intelligent people can disagree about stuff. Despite occasionally running my mouth, I don't think people who call themselves socialists are evil. Uh, oh, despite occasionally running my mouth... Okay, I see what I'm, how I'm reading that wrong. Uh, are evil, mad, stupid, or deserving of being attacked. I just see the world differently. The last time I discussed politics with Turner... We were sharing a tiny dressing room at a benefit gig for people with disabilities. I was chiding him for claiming in an interview that he was not a political songwriter. I reminded him what happened uh, at his recent Wembley Arena gig when he played the song Glory Hallelujah. 12,000 people lifted up their voices and sang the refrain, Because There Never Was No God. Come on, I said. You've got to admit that's political. Uh, he shook his head vehemently. Uh, no, it's not, he said, uh, taking a slug on another of my beers. It's just me saying what I think. Was he being evasive, unwilling to engage in political debate for fear of revealing his right-wing leanings, or simply ref refusing to have his politics defined by the values of a previous generation? Uh, Turner, spent, Turner, like most musicians of his generation, has uh, never played on a picket line. Born in 1981, he spent... 2000 through 2005 in a hardcore punk band called Million Dead. Uh, this period also saw the rise of, in popularity of the MP3 music file. Uh, for the first time, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing offered musicians a means to reach their audience without uh, surrendering control to the man. When the major record companies moved to close down the Napster file sharing site in 2001, many saw this as an attempt to suppress the freedoms that they enjoyed on the internet. Anger was directed not only against corporate conglomerates and government agencies implementing the crackdown, but at the whole concept of copyright itself. Bloggers began to self-identify as libertarians, uh, giving a political dimension to their anger. I get the feeling that Turner's politics were defined by the struggle that, by the struggle that, inspired by the libertarian language of the blogosphere, he adopted a worldview that echoes that espoused by Mick Jagger in the 1960s. Um, how much longer is this post? Oh, not too much longer. I'll keep going. Because i got nothing else to talk about. As I take a sip of my nice cold water. Um, where was I? Uh, okay. Uh, following his release from drug charges in 1967, Jagger was interviewed on TV by William Rees Mogg, then editor of The Times. According to his memoirs, Rees Mogg expected, expecting to hear Jagger express the left-leaning views of the Beatles, was astonished to find that the leader of the Rolling Stones took an individualistic libertarian view on ethical and social issues. Writing years later, Rees Mogg argued that Jagger uh, could be described as an early Thatcherite. Which is not to say that Turner is a follower of the Iron Lady. Uh, rather, he seems to have come uh, to the same conclusion that I did in the late 70s, uh, that there is not much difference between labor and the Tories. I think he's wrong, but having come of age in a time when ideology was dumped in favor of triangulation, who can blame him? Uh, his angry denunciation of the left made in 2009 uh, Moon and Back Music Interview uh, should be seen in that light. He made these comments before the Tories came to power, uh, galvanizing uh, a new generation into anti-cuts activists. 
and he was quickly issued and he quickly issued a statement making it clear that he is no supporter of David Cameron. And of course, he isn't the first pop star to slip spectacularly on a banana skin when making sweeping statements about politics. Uh, Turner ha- Turner has a social conscience. Let no one uh, be in any doubt of that. He will stand in opposition to anyone he feels is holding people back from reaching their full potential. Witnesses support for the rights of people with disabilities at the benefit gig last month. Uh, what he doesn't have or even feels he requires is an ideological analysis to, uh, to back up the ideas expressed in his songs. Uh, what Bragg, uh, what Bragg got that others missed is the fact that Turner's politics can't be summed up in a package with a nice little bow that conforms to the standard left-right dichotomy. Last year, I had the distinct honor viewer, honor of interviewing Turner, and I posed the question of politics and being a libertarian to him. Uh, Dave, which is me. Here's my interview question. In an interview on JBTV, you mentioned that you are a libertarian. What type of libertarian do you consider yourself? Do you feel you uh, are more in line philosophically with the likes of John Locke and Thomas Jefferson or Ron Paul or Ayn Ayn Rand? Uh, Frank, I don't know too much about Ron Paul, actually. Rand, well, she has some uh, pithy quotes here and there, but her writing was pretty terrible, and her imagery isn't to my taste at all. Uh, Let's just say... Uh, let's just say that I actually consider myself to be a pretty classical to be a pretty classical liberal, but the word liberal has been so abused in recent history that it's um, uh, it's pretty much meaningless now. For example, the uh, Liberal Party in the UK is currently pushing for the state to draw up a list of approved journalists and ban anyone else from writing publicly. The mind boggles. My political heroes are. Uh, are people like Locke, Payne, and Jefferson, and Franklin as well. Uh, to put it another way, I'm an Enlightenment fan, but specifically not a Marxist. That doesn't sound like a right-winger to me, does it to you? Uh, for years, especially in the United States, libertarians have sided with Republicans and conservatives, i.e. right-wingers, because of the similarities in their economic policies, but on social issues, they couldn't be more different. In order to understand the difference, one must understand uh, that the actual nature of various political philosophy. Here's a basic breakdown. Imagine a bar graph. Oh, my favorite bar graph. I love this. Uh, my friend Josh described this to me. This is this is great. Best way to, to explain politics. Oh, I love it. Um, where was I? Here's a basic... Imagine a bar graph with a horizontal and vertical axis that cross in the center of the graph. On the left horizontal end of the graph, you have liberalism, which essentially believes that the government should be able to tell you what to do with your money, but not your morals. On the right horizontal end of the graph, uh, you have conservatism, which essentially believes that the government should be able to tell you what to do with your morals, but not your money. On the bottom is authoritarianism slash totalitarianism, which believes that the government should be able to tell you what to do with your money, morals, and pretty much everything else. At the top is libertarianism, which believes that the government shouldn't be able to tell you what to do with your money or your morals. Obviously, there are more nuances to it, but this gives you a pretty uh, gives you the general idea. Uh, depending on one's belief, he or she generally falls into one of the quadrants on the graph. Personally, I fall in the liberal libertarian portion. Right-wingers would generally fall into the conservative authoritarian quadrant of the graph, see Newt Gingrich, Dick Cheney, and Rush Limbaugh. As uh, one can tell by the description of uh, political, by this description of political philosophy, what Turner has espoused is far from right-wing ideology. Those who would uh, see his views as right-wing are either ignorant of the true nature of political philosophy or simply lazy in their reporting. I suspect it's probably a combination of both. So, yeah. That's the thing about politics, is people love to, to just say uh, conservative or liberal, right-wing or left-wing, leftist, all this crap, and so often it is just completely inaccurate. And And what's funny, especially in a state like Oklahoma, is you've got people who 
will say, oh, yeah, I am for, I'm for limited government. I am for uh, liberty. I, I am, I am a, I want people to get out of the way, but then the, the things that they actually support aren't, don't do that. It's just, uh, it's, it just, um, basically liberty for those who agree with them. And, uh, and you know, the, the commie pinko leftist Looney tunes are the same way. You know, they want freedom for those who agree with them. And I, I think a lot of times it's unintentional. Uh, cause I think I, now I do think there are people that truly believe with all their heart and soul that those who disagree with them should be locked up and thrown into a gulag. Uh, those people have problems, but the, I think the average person who's just getting by a lot of times doesn't realize some of the inconsistencies in his or her fl- political philosophies when it comes to things like freedom. A great example is freedom of religion. Um, so yeah, it's just because someone, you know, one has inconsistencies doesn't mean they're a bad person. Or most importantly, just because someone doesn't agree with you doesn't make them evil or demonic or, you know, lurking behind some corner trying to steal your rights or, or take something away from you. That, that whole mentality is asinine. Um, but yeah. So let's going to change gears a little bit. It's the end of the year. Last time we talked about my top 15 EPs of 2013. So now we're going to talk about the top 30 albums of 2013. And uh, when I I wrote up my list, I actually broke it into three separate posts on OklahomaLefty.com. And we're going to go through uh, 30 through 21 right now. We might actually do all of them today. Just depends on what else I can think to talk about. Um, which at the moment I'm not thinking of much. So this, this uh, attempt at a daily radio show may not last long. I don't know. So anyway, um, here we go. Top 30 albums of 2013. Number 30 is Dead Language by the Flatliners. Uh, Flatliners are on Fat Records. I'm actually really new to this band. Uh, they've been around for a while. Apparently, they had a lot of real ska leanings in some of their uh, earlier material. Uh, this album just sounds a lot like um, melodic punk rock, and uh, it was really good. Uh, the guys, the lead singer's voice took me a little while to get into, but um, still, it was, it was interesting. It, it was cool hearing something from a band from this band after I'd heard about them for so long. And then hearing this now, knowing the fact that a lot of their older material is more ska related, which I like ska, don't get me wrong, but I'm not sure how much I'm going to, um, how much, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, how much I would like it, but you know, I, I do like ska. I, I love the specials and, uh, and a lot of the, the early ska punk bands like Operation Ivy, Mighty Mighty Boston's, all that stuff's great. Like Rancid, no, Flatliners have, have been compared to Rancid a lot, which I didn't hear at all in this record in Dead Language, but it's still, still a very, very good record. Um, next, number 29 from Fort Collins, Colorado, Colorado is Elways with Leave Taking. Uh, these guys are a pop punk band. That actually, they, they do a lot more than just pop punk. There's a lot of elements of pop punk. There's elements of melodic, um, kind of uh, a lot of hardcore. There's some emo y elements. There's some uh, post hardcore elements. But it's a really tight band. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Uh, number 28 um, is Arliss Nancy with Wild American Runners. These guys are a uh, alt-country band. This is their third full-length, and it uh, starts out with two just killer uh, rockers uh, with Benjamin and Troubadour, and then it kind of uh, turns to a little darker and uh, more somber element for the rest of the record. And these guys are really good about showing the, the diverse elements of, of alt-country, 
and uh, another all of their their albums that I've heard have been really good. All right, number twenty seven is Kaylin Rose with a stand in. Uh, Kaylin Rose is she the the best way to describe her is she has this voice that is equal parts Patsy Cline, Stevie Nicks, and Jenny Lewis, uh, and the record is is a mix of traditional country, pop, and Americana, and it's so beautiful. It is. In fact, this probably should have ended up being a lot higher on my list. And it's it's one of those records that every time I listen to it, I'm like, oh my god, this is so good. Uh, but it's one I just, for whatever reason, don't listen to a whole lot. Where a lot of the things in my higher up in the list, I listen to a whole lot more. That's why this one didn't go any higher. But it is a phenomenal record. And the the, the track, every, Everywhere I Go, is... It's staggeringly beautiful. It is just an amazing song. Excuse me while I get a drink. All right. Number 26 is Courtney Marie Andrews with On My Page. And this is another, um, she is another singer who's got a, um, it's a really lush collection of, of folk and country songs. Um, and she also, she reminds me a lot in a lot of ways of, of Caitlin Rose, but she is more where Caitlin Rose is Patsy Cline, Stevie Nicks, Jenny Lewis, Courtney, um, Marie Andrews is a mix of Jenny Lewis, Dolly Parton and Dusty Springfield. So it's definitely more of a, a, there's more of a country element to on my page. And, uh, again, this is another one that every time I listen to, I'm like, Holy crap, this is really good. But for whatever reason, I just don't listen to it that often, which is a shame. Um, all right. Number 25, the gateway district with old wild hearts, man, these guys are great. Uh, they've got, um, it's a band that has former members of the Soviets banner pilot and off with their heads and great catchy as all get out, uh, female fronted pop punk, just tight, tight band, uh, fun stuff. Number 24 is no Haven, no Haven, heaven. No Heaven by The Slow Death. Uh, this is a really good punk rock that is a mix of pop punk, 77 style, and Midwest uh, punk. All the different subgenres. If you have no idea what any of that means, that's okay. It's Imagine a band that sounds like a bunch of guys grew up listening to uh, the likes of Rancid, The Ramones, and... Uh, yeah, a lot of rants in the Ramones and the Clash and uh, and some like Pegboy and uh, Dillinger 4 just for, for good keeping. Uh, yeah, and it's there. There's nothing new really going on in that record, but what they do is really, really good. Uh, number 23 is Restorations with LP2. Uh, Restorations comes from Philadelphia. And the thing about Restorations is trying to describe their music is really, really hard. Uh, because it's obviously some type of punk rock. And it definitely takes elements from from post-hardcore and, and classic rock and all these other uh, types of things. Um, straight up punk. Uh, you, there's even a little bit of progressive classic rock going on in here, emo. And so you listen to it and you're like, yeah, okay, I can hear those those different elements, but you, you try to explain some to someone what restoration sounds like. It's hard. I can't figure out a real way to do it, and, and not one that's very coherent. Uh, but they are tight as hell. Uh, Philadelphia is becoming one one hell of a city for, for rock and roll. I mean, the restorations comes from there. Uh, Luther is from there. Dave Haas is from there. And qu actually quite a few other bands come out of Philly that, uh, it's a really, really uh, good, good scene. So guys in Philly, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, number 22 is lipstick homicide without utero. Uh, this is, uh, 
it's a three piece where their lead vocals are shared by the bassist and guitarist, both um, bassist Rachel Feldman and guitarist Kate Kane. And they have great harmonies, great dual female vocals, uh, intensely catchy and um, youthful fervor in this record. This is exactly the kind of thing that, you know, 15, 20 years ago would have been on on Lookout Records or Doctor Strange Records. It's This is the kind of thing that would have been right at home next to the early Green Day stuff, the Screeching Weasel albums, uh, the Sinkhole albums. It would have just been just absolutely perfect with that. Um, number 21 is The Thermals with Desperate Ground. Uh, the Thermals power pop band, they have described their own music as post-power pop. Um, and Desperate Ground really is a record that they strip away a lot of what they've done with their last few albums. It's their sixth full-length record. Uh, and it really takes them back to the lo-fi beginnings of their album, their first two records, More Parts Per Million and Fucking A. Uh, More Parts Per Million was actually originally recorded as a demo. They sent it to Sub Pop. Sub Pop loved it so much, they just put it out as a record. And then they, uh, uh, Fucking A came out a little bit later, and then they put out The Body of the Blood, The Machine, which was the record that really took off for them. And these guys just write incredibly good songs. I've seen them live. They're unbelievably good live. Just really, really tight. And it's they've got a very 90s indie rock feel to them. I mean, they're, they're a band that would have been right at home back in the day touring alongside of Sebado and Archers of Loaf and Super Chunk. Which, hell, they still probably could because of all of those bands are still together. And, wow, that would actually be a great, great indie rock supergroup tour. Super Chunk, Archers of Loaf, and Sebado. Wow, that would be awesome. I've actually seen Sebado once. They were apparently sick because they weren't that great. But, so that is the first 10 in my list. And uh, let's see here. We are getting close to the top of the hour. So I think we'll go ahead and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this list. Because this list is fun. I like lists. And I don't really got nothing else. Um, I'm looking at some of the stories I've, I've actually been finding from... Uh, for the last couple of weeks, and I'm just not in the mood to talk really about any of that stuff. Um, oh, hey, I just got an email for free medium pizza with purchase of $25 Mazio's gift card. No thanks. And let's see here. Oh, that's a good idea, Steve. Um, so my, my good friend and often partner in crime, Steve, who is uh, at work right now, uh, just sent me an idea. Of, talk about why I like lists. <sighs> Liking lists is almost something that's a little hard to explain, but I just find them fun. And I, whenever I think of stuff I like, a lot of times I just, in my head, put them into lists of best to worst, favorite to least favorite. And I, I just think it, it's, it's an interesting way to see into someone's psyche or see where someone's coming from when they list out things that they like, be it music, TV shows, movies. And it's, uh, they're just fun. Okay. That took all of about 30 seconds to explain. Okay, you know what, guys? I'm calling this one early today. Now, starting next month, here at K98 Talk, we're actually going to try to do this legit-like. 
and uh, go 24-7 and be a full-blown radio station. So by that point, I'm going to have to really get my shit together. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. No, I mean, Robert, if you're listening, I will get my stuff together by then. Um, so <laughs> it'll it'll be interesting. It's, uh, I've really enjoyed doing the Finding Common Ground show with Robert. And then doing this show has also been fun. Uh, my problem is sometimes I'm not always inspired and I can't always think of stuff to talk about. And I've definitely gotten better at talking about nothing for extended periods of time. Granted, there's been a lot of dead, air, dead air on this show today, but it's talking for two hours without really taking a break. Cause right now we don't, as far as I know, we don't have any commercials to play, which if uh, you want a great place to advertise, shoot us an email at commongroundmediagroup at gmail.com. And uh, our good, good, fearless leader, Roberto, will get back with you and give you talk to you about options. And it's a really great way to spread the word about your killer business. So uh, we'd love to have you advertise here on the K98 Talk. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and... and uh, roll on out of here today and uh, i know it's been a little short but that's what she said okay folks you guys have a great day the evolution of talk radio has begun you are listening to k98 talk.com you are now tuned into the bush leagues of talk radio right now on k98 talk